Hello and welcome to a new Age of Empires 2 tutorial. Today I want to show you another build order. It is quite unusual and somewhat gimmicky, but it's a lot of fun once you get the hang of it and, um, well, you should just give it a try. I'm talking about the Smash, the Saracen Monk Rush. This strategy makes use of a Saracen market bonus, which gives you better exchange rates. Also, the building cost of the market is reduced for the Saracens, something that comes into play as well. In a way, this build order is very different from most standard ones and requires you to think a little outside the box. I had learned this build a little differently, but modified it myself to optimize it slightly. My version is not at all um, yeah, like very different from the original one, but it, it produces consistently better results or faster results. So um, I bet there are even more optimized ways for this, but um, well, this is the one I know and feel free to comment any improvements that you know of. Be warned, the smash requires some practice and takes a lot of attention to execute. Uh, but don't be disencouraged. Once you grasp the concept, it is really fun to play and soon enough your friends will hate monks like Catholic schoolboys. I recommend downloading the original Vololo sound in the Steam Workshop to enjoy this even further. Let's jump into the build. First of all, you want to build two houses with the initial villagers. Make sure to build one house with two villagers and the second with one villager. So split them up. The idea behind this is that once you've, your sheep arrive, that these two can get to work and the other one can finish up in the meantime. Um, your scout should um, start scouting well and, and find the initial sheep. You send one of these sheep underneath your town center where the, th the three villagers you built the houses with and the next three villagers coming from your TC will gather from a sheep. Make sure to only slaughter one sheep at a time to not waste any food to decaying. Since uh, you, if you slaughter any, any kind of animal in this game, the food will slowly disappear. See here comes the sixth in total. And now it already starts to become a little unusual for, well, standard builds, I say. Um, the next three villagers are going to um, the berries and also build a mill there. Um, normally you would go to berries later on, but in this build, few things are normal. I'll speed this up a little. Here comes the first one. He will obviously build the mill. Uh, the mill placement wasn't all that good here, but um, it doesn't, doesn't matter all that much. Also, the, uh, the um, berry villagers will later take care of building houses. So always build a house if you're too pop away from the um, maximum. So if you reach 13 in this case, then you should build the next one. So we have the three on uh, berries. And now the next two villagers also come to sheep for a total of eight sheep gathering villagers. Seven right now. Next one, so now we've reached eight. And the next two villagers are sent on a straggler tree next to VTC since we don't have enough wood to actually build a lumber camp. We have to make do with uh, some of these um, straggler trees first. I comes the second anytime soon. Um, and then um, the more complicated things that um, will start at least for beginners that is. The next vill is uh, sent to lure the first boar. Shoot the boar twice and then run back to VTC. Kill the boar with the sheep wills in a way that makes it die underneath the TC. Make sure to garrison the luring will in time so it doesn't die and put it on the boar afterwards to not waste any villager working time. So here it moves out and it will shoot the boar twice as I just said. Um, optim uh, so optimally try to finish the f sheep that you have already slaughtered first before starting um, killing the boar. Um, but this takes some practice you will see how I am trying to uh, lure around and let me pause this for a second. So I, I, the way I will do this is um, try to lure the boar close by and have it get stuck on the other villages while this uh, villager is still running around. So as soon as you garrison your luring villager, the boar will run back to where it came from unless you are shooting it with other villagers. So what I will do is run with the villager, have the boar run into the other villagers while they're finishing up the sheep, which um, still holding quite a lot of food, and then I will try to shoot the boar as late as possible before the villager gets into grave danger or the boar is uh, threatening to run back again. The villager that comes out after, after that is going to, to the straggler trees as well for a total of three. I just pause to make uh, sure that I get everything set in time. So here you see the villager approaching and I want to run through this path in between the TC and the villager so the boar gets somewhat stuck and then it comes around the other way. Um, if you're not familiar with boar luring that much and uh, especially not with the weight, you can delay this boar lure. Um, don't try this because it's, it's somewhat risky and you might end up losing a villager which hurts you much much more than 
uh, having an unfinished sheep. If you kill the boar without finishing the sheep, you just leave one or two villagers on the sheep to finish it up and send all the others to the boar. And once the sheep is finished, you send those villagers that finish it up to the boar as well. So now they finished all up and I could um, shoot the boar. And there it dies and I send everybody on it. The next villagers, uh, the next villager um, is also going to the boar, so the one that came after the straggler tree boar, um, villagers. And then the next two go to um, berries for a total of five on berries. So this is the fourth, and then the next one will also go there. And once you finish up the straggler tree, you should have enough wood to send all your free uh, wood carters to a close by forest and build a lumber camp there to um, gather food from the nearby forest. So that was the fifth, and now this is already the last villager we will do in until we reach Castle Age, really. So this villager is the 19th, and this villager will lure the second boar in. Finish up the first boar, and then research Feudal Age. You should be able to do that once the uh, boar is uh, all used up. Uh, typically, you will have to idle your TC for a while to get the food in, so this will slow you down a little bit, but uh, I haven't managed to do this without any kind of delay. So just make sure to um, uh, have the villager um, well, bring the food in in time and to go up to the village. Try to minimize this time where the, your TC is not actually doing anything. So the second boar is coming in and then obviously you try to kill it as well. Garrison the um, luring villager and then put everybody on that boar. Uh, in the meantime, when you are transitioning to the village, you always, uh, obviously want to slaughter the boar and get all the food. But also you want to readjust some of the villagers that are underneath the town center. You will send three of them to the forest to gather wood and two more to the berries. So you have a total of seven on the berries, total of six on the wood and another six underneath your town center finishing up the boar and any sheep you might have left. So in this case I still had eight, so I garrisoned two of those and sent them to the berries. So this is really everything um, economy wise you have to do at this point. The idea is really that you reach 700 food by the time you finish up your um, feudal age buildings that you will need to go up to the castle age and then you buy food to get to that 800 in total and then you can move on to the next age. Usually um, this build cuts it very very close so it, you might have to idle your TC to reach this goal and to force drop off some uh, resources but you will see how I do that in a second. When you reach feudal age do not train any new villagers. Uh, but uh, take two from the, uh, or in total you take three from the berries, have two of them build a market and one of them build a blacksmith. So I will speed it up a little. Here we reach the fuel age, I do not train any villagers, I send these three after um, bringing in the berries to build the market and the blacksmith. These villagers are finishing up the boar and the sheep after that. And you see I'm very close to 700 and I actually have to force drop off some of the berries after because I'm literally one food away from the 700 goal. And what you do with the villagers once they are finished, you will send these six to stone and also these three that have um, constructed both the blacksmith and the market for a total of nine on stone because this strategy uh, firstly um, relies on selling resources. So you will sell stone at the market for a better price because the price for stone for the Saracens remains above 100 per 100 stone for quite a while. So it's uh, it's better than actually mining uh, gold for a while. So second um, building finishes. You sell all your stone. Se uh, first I dropped it off. Sell all the stone, buy 100 food, go to the castle age. That was quick. <laughs> uh, typically you should reach the castle age around 30 minutes 30. You can make it a little faster, I don't remember how fast I was in this record, uh, but um, it's, it doesn't matter all that much if it's like 30 and 40 or 30 and 20. It should definitely be a somewhat of the 13 time and you should reach uh, the feudal age usually around 7 minutes 30. Uh, I, might, I, mean, I mean click up to the feudal age, not reach it at, at that time, it would be even faster. So and when your um, castle age research is at about 40 to 50 percent you should send two of the um, berry gatherers forward because they will build monasteries at the front. I did this a little too early, that's why uh, my villagers actually um, had to find some other 
things to do in the meantime so I, they ended up uh, building more houses you should build at least one house on the way but uh, they ended up building houses and slaughtering stabbing to death those wolves for good measure so um, as this is a monk rush you obviously need monasteries to pump out some monks so you find um, your enemy you should have scouted him and built somewhat close to him but not too close so he doesn't um, spot you and um, you will build two monasteries usually you will just have enough wood to do that so you might want to build one monastery first and wait for the uh, wood to come in and then build the second um, economy wise at home you still mostly rely on the market so you have just this one berry patch left usually or sometimes the second one and first the new villages will all go to the berries but uh, soon enough you will have to switch to uh, to um, farms and in the meantime you should just sell your stone and buy some food to keep the economy rolling because you will be behind on economy quite uh, a lot so you have to make some uh, catch up uh, you have to do some catching up um, so now we reach the castle age you see it's roughly 1330 build the first monastery I'm just short of uh, sh five wood short of the next monastery so I just waited to for that to come in and then I built the second one right uh, beneath it uh, next to it so uh, here we see the new villagers all going um, first to the berries and then I decided I will switch to um, wood a little earlier to go to the farms earlier this is all just a matter of preference, but it's really important to use your market to adjust your economy so your TC doesn't idle necessarily, uh, unnecessarily, that's what I meant. So um, you will not engage unless you have at least four monks. So uh, when you train your first monk, you should uh, see if you have any close by relics you could gather um, because that will get, get you like a little more gold and you will need a lot of gold. And in the meantime, uh, you, I, I like to send the two villages I, I sent to the front to some other resource to not waste their time. So in this case, I just send them to a nearby forest and build a lumber camp to have them gather some wood. So I will speed this up a little until we have four monks. So once you have those four monks, it's time to attack, obviously. Uh, focus on converting enemy military units first because they are threatening to your, military, uh, to your monks. So we will see this in a, in a, in a second here. Uh, always make sure to only convert one enemy unit at a time with one monk. So you don't use up the faith of more than one monk at a time. Use monks with recovering faith to heal other monks and convert uh, and converted units alike. So just make sure to always use your monks. Uh, and in this case, I'll just stop this for a second. And we can see this was the monk that converted this archer. So he is just healing and this monk has 100 faith and he will start converting one of these skirmishers I believe and I didn't attack with this archer but had it walk around to basically draw the fire and not damage the other units because I wanted to convert them and didn't want to hurt, uh, hurt or kill them in the meantime so in this case the enemy spotted me a little early on so I had not the four monks I wanted to move out but it's, it's not such a big deal if you uh, are quick to react but typically you want to catch your enemy by surprise really so the initial few conversions are really crucial, try to not lose any monks or just try to lose as little as possible and um, convert as many enemy units as possible to, uh, and not kill them, try to not kill units and just rather convert them so your enemy is, is losing um, his troops but you're also gaining troops, that's really important. And uh, your monks will be able to heal each other and the converted units to make them a lot, li lot, little more um, buffed really and um, makes it less likely for them to die or lose to the enemy units at all. Uh, once you have converted a few enemy troops, they should be stronger than the enemy with that constant healing going on. And if you caught your opponent with his pants down and he hasn't made any military whatsoever, focus on villages, of course. You should do that regardless, so at some point you should move to this, uh, your enemy's economy and start converting his villagers and try to gather some of his resources instead of yours, so you're basically stealing his gold by stealing his stone. And also I like to build my buildings in, with those converted villagers in the enemy base or close by. So just spam some houses in the enemy base to take up some space and um, build, your, build more monasteries later on if you can afford it. Or um, other military buildings uh, depending on how the game is going really. Just make sure to always protect your monks, heal them, um, convert as many enemy units as possible. Always convert with one uh, monk at a time and so on. Um, if you have around 10 monks and you can spare it, you should research Sanctity for uh, more HP. I think it might come up soon. I was housed here for a second. And um, you should also research um, Favor for faster conversions and Redemption. But that is really expensive. Redemption makes you convert enemy buildings. 
So you only can get that later on when you're already somewhat rolling. In this case, I waited too long and just um, kept converting enemy units. I should have moved in to convert some of his economy, but I had a lot of fun <laughs> converting his archers, so I don't know. I was a little too defensive in this case. You should move out a little earlier. Try to get some of the, those uh, gold villagers to collect some of his gold. Speaking of which, um, obviously the gold is coming from selling stone and at some point the price will drop so it will not be worth it anymore and you should move your villagers to mine gold instead. Usually you should do that around when the price drops to maybe 90 per 100 units of stone but in this case I, I totally forgot about that and I think I only moved them when the stone mines ran out. Um, so here we see the greatest threat to the monks, that's the scout, so you should either focus them down with the converted units or try to convert them really upless, but they resist conversion quite a lot and uh, that makes them a big threat to monks. So, um, is there anything more I have to say really? I, I'm not sure. Um, once you feel like you have your enemy on lockdown, you should also build a siege workshop on the front. I'll speed this up a little because I'm not sure when I did that. Um, and, well, try to finish off your enemy with some um, mangonels. Shoot his TC because the TC is also the only well, crucial building you cannot convert with your arms once you have redemption. So that's something you should focus on and also to um, cripple the enemy's economy a little more. Um, and as I said, try to get some more villagers. Uh, in this case, I really focused a lot on the enemy um, military, which gave me an advantage militarily. Um, but I mean, I actually should have focused more on the villagers. But it disrupted his economy regardless, so it's, it's, it's still fine, I guess. And uh, with the villagers you convert on the front, you should, uh, as I said, either gather the enemy resources to basically steal from them, or build some uh, towers as well, that's also a good idea. So in this case I sent some of the converted villagers to the stone mine to mine some stone and build some towers, because some, uh, some even a few strategic towers can really zone your enemy off resources and make it much harder for them to react to your rush. So this smush is um, somewhat difficult to execute because you have to control all your monks individually and have to manage the economy at home as well. Obviously the strategy leaves you very vulnerable at home and despite a 30-30 castle time it's much slower than more, more common uh, rushes. So it's rather a fun strategy that you can use against weaker enemies uh, to troll your friends or to play against the AI uh, such as uh, in this case. Uh, to counter the smush, uh, the smush, smush um, throw scouts at the monks. So because of the reasons I, I mentioned they resist conversion and they are really effective against scouts, uh, against monks, obviously. So also harass the enemy in his unprotected base if you're facing a smash because the enemy will have basically nothing at home so you can just disrupt his economy and uh, punish him for um, moving forward and uh, investing so much into monks. Um, and uh, you can also use towers to zone off some uh, parts of your economy because monks are not really faring well against towers. Even with redemption it's not really worth converting. Um, against typical rushes the strategy usually doesn't work. Um, so if your enemy is doing a scout rush, a dark rage rush or a tower rush, the smash usually loses to that because it's just that much slower and it takes a lot of commitment and a lot of idling and uh, has a crippling economy really so it's, it's pretty risky but if you can really perform it it's a lot of fun and here you saw I just built the siege workshop and the AI already gave up because I had converted a shit ton of his units and he was basically zoned off all his resources. I had this tower here up killing some of his villagers. Um, a human player might even react worse than the AI, AI because it's uh, such an unusual strategy. I, I don't think it's played that much online anymore, so if you have some friends you really want to fuck over or uh, just um, s well, troll some people, it's really a fun way of doing that. So um, I, I believe this is, uh, despite being a um, well, difficult and not all that valid, um, valid strategy, it's really a fun one and I, I like to do it uh, from time to time really. So I hope you enjoy the smush and uh, you can get the Wololo party starting. I will um, show you quickly the um, uptimes I had in this case. It was a 9.30 a fuel age time and a 13.26 uh, castle age time. It's not super good but uh, it's absolutely decent so as long as it's not 13 minutes you should be fine. Against the AI it really doesn't matter all that much because they usually play a little slower even when they're rushing. The rushes are not coming in before the 15 minute mark so you should still be able to catch them off guard. So I hope this uh, was uh, fun to watch and hopefully you can uh, also um, do this after a little practice. So good luck and have fun.